All right, so we're sitting here, me, George, and Mikhail, and we're gonna sit down and talk about bunions. Favorite subject for everybody. How does that sound? Good? Good. All right, let's talk about bunions. So what is a bunion? A bunion is basically a, a protrusion of the bone of the big toe, uh, which means protrusion meaning that it's coming out. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I have this bone on the side of the foot, and they point to it right there, it's pointing. So we just want to explain to the patient as much as possible what is a bunion and how we try and take care of it as much as possible. So, here it is. The bone here, which is the big toe bone, as you can come here, so as you can see it better, okay? This bone here is attached to this here, which is the toe, and it's attached back here to the bone of the midfoot, which is the cuneiform. A cuneiform is a bone that's sitting in the midfoot right here, right in front of the navicular bone, which is the saucer bone. And those bones here, all three of them, are connected to this navicular bone, and that is also affected by the ankle bone. So the ankle bone hits this bone here, it hits all three of these bones together. So if you look at the foot, the foot is actually two sections. There is the inside section, and there's the outside section. And the inside section is basically controlled by the talus, which is the ankle bone. The outside section is controlled by the calcaneus, which is the heel bone. But they're interactive all the time, which means that it moves this way and this way all the time. And not only does it move this way and this way, but also it moves outwards. So if the talus is sitting down and it turns, this thing here kind of goes out to capture more ground and then you get a bunion. So what happens is the big toe bone, which is this bone here, will actually start to move and move and move outwards to capture more ground. The toe is sitting in front of it will start to go inwards and you get this bump. So basically a bunion is an imbalance of what a toe structure should look like. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's what a bunion is. How do you correct it? Well, the problem is that this here is pushing too much. If I come here and this is pushed in and this is out and the toe is here and the little toe is over here, you know, and I, I just don't do anything back here and I just move this over like that. Do you think that's a viable option? Your body weight is coming here. The body is reacting by having the bunion. So the bunion is basically a natural process that the body is doing to capture more ground. And if you move the bunion out of there and you don't correct the ground reactive force by correcting the issue you know, that you have that's causing it, you're gonna start to flip down on the floor and that's gonna make you fall down on the floor. And not only that, the force here will, will make this go back out and you will have a bunion coming back. A lot of people think, oh, my bunions are coming back, why? Well, because this is not working, you know? The ankle is not sitting well and it's not working. So do we need to correct it? Well, if I am like this and I have this ankle bone twisted like this and I just correct the twisting, as you can see, my hand as I move it upwards, now it's not on side angle, but it is on top to bottom angle. And that would reduce the bunion formation because now it's released from, from the ground and it's not moving anymore, it's not causing it to move. Nevertheless, that as it moves backwards where it should be, it elevates too. So it's going from zero to whatever it is. And that elevation can cause jamming and it can cause problems. But there is, thank God, there is a tendon that helps us. It's called the peroneus longus tendon. And it comes right through this groove here, goes all the way around to the big toe, and it pulls it down. So when, when I correct this, this here goes up with it, and then the peroneus longus tendon comes into play, and it moves this down. Now, as this happens, the bunion may still continue to be there for a while, because it took it some time for it to come in, and now it's going to come back. It, you know, it's going to continue to be there until this relaxes and comes back to normal. And that may take some time. So do you want to surgerize a bunion? And that's the biggest issue. In my opinion, you have to fix the original problem, which is the ankle bone. 
once you correct the ankle bone and once you put that in good positioning you start physical therapy to strengthen the muscles of the big toe bone and to strengthen it to it, it can it becomes very much better for you and for the patient and as that happens then the toe should align a little bit better if patients are very cautious about it and very mindset about it and they're like okay well this doesn't look good at that point we're looking at looks more so than function the function of it is there but the looks of it may not be there if you want to do anything i don't usually do any osteotomies if i don't need to i usually try to minimize my osteotomies and i'll show you some pictures afterwards just to show you before and after kind of like you know what what we have um i hope we have some pictures we'll see but anyway if we don't have we'll, we'll put some pictures up later okay about before and after but basically once we do this we just basically relax some of the tendons and strengthen some of them right on the surgical table and that will help tremendously the bunion formation what do you think george what do you think uh, michael so what else a patient asks let's see let's brainstorm a little bit what do you think pause no i'd like to talk yeah you can talk mm, uh, at least a lot of patients like to Mm, uh, story, but, uh, correct, correct uh, just ca cosmetics. Eh? Yeah. Not, not all mechanism, and it's not correct. I think we should. And patients need nice feet. Nice, especially, especially when they are women. Yeah. Yeah. They want to correct only just the cosmetic thing, and they want to wear nice shoes, and they don't recognize and understand that. The, whole thing is to change biomechanic uh, correct and then uh, then think about cosmetic things so right it's my right. opinion well cosmetics comes from mechanical issues i mean me mechanical issues is what's causing the body so mm -hmm. and that becomes cosmetic because then you, you can see it you know yeah and sometimes it becomes more painful and that point it's really bad for the patient you know especially when the nerve gets caught and all these things you know so what we're doing is we're trying to explain what we can do about it now you have to educate i'm not, that's why i'm doing these videos you know for you guys you know for my future doctors and for also for my patients to explain to them how bunion feels how does it work and why we do certain things why we don't do certain things because we don't want to harm the patient if we don't need to if you cut the bone, move the bone over, uh, it looks great. You know, the patient would look very, very nice, right? But, yeah. but did you did you serve them well? You know, and I, I that's my biggest, biggest concern is you're not serving them well. And that makes it very hard for the patient. Don't you agree? Yes. You know, and uh, that's the thing. You, you have, you know, I can always cut the bone. I can always cut the bone. I can always move the bone. It's not, it's not a big deal to do that, you know? Some of them are minimally invasive procedures. But on the other end, you know, you're not correcting mechanics. You need to correct mechanics, mm -hmm. you know? Mm, yes, of course. Yeah, and things don't of, come back. Right, yeah. and one of the mechanical things that you can do to correct the mechanics is the hypercure procedure whereby we go in and we stop the abnormal motion of the talus by inserting a... Um, a stent right into the sinus area so as this does not fall when this stops to fall then we have corrected the mechanics now don't take me wrong i mean if we have to do something about it that's fine we will you know and there are plates that we can use screws there are you know all kinds of things that we can use but in my opinion just simple things first and that's to put in something under the talus you know to correct the way it operates the more ergonomic the better i like the hot procure because it's actually something that fits better for the talus sits good i can show you on a different model so as you can see better if you want to pause so here this uh, this shows you the ergonomic of the of the talus calcaneus and if you look at it you can see how the sinus is there's like two facets here one facet here and they sit right on top of each other 
Normally they operate like this. That's how they normally operate. But most people, when we see them here, they're already operating like this. Collapsed. It's already collapsed. And that's the collapse of this sinus is what I'm talking about. And that's this piece right here, you know? So if I can put a stent in there to hold that sinus from falling, and this is just a plastic model to show you, if this sits right here, then this stops it from collapsing and it doesn't let it go come down. And because it's inside a, um, a hole, it is not touching cartilage, as you can see here. It is not in the bone, it's outside the bone. So it is not car touching cartilage, it's not in the bone, it's extra. So it's called extra, you know, uh, bone, extra cartilage, intraligamentous, okay? Some people call it E-O-T-S, and that's uh, the name of it. But basically, this is the hypercure procedure well, why we fix this. Once we fix this, once you fix this problem, hopefully this will sit better. You get physical therapy, maybe get an arch support if you have to. If you don't need to, you don't need to. But sometimes I give them an arch support just to correct the transverse arch more so than the longitudinal arch because this here has corrected the longitudinal arch, but the transverse arch is, is, is still having a problem. That's the thing. Most people don't understand the foot has three arches. There's the inside arch, there's the outside arch, and there's a transverse arch. And if all three of them are there, the foot is in stable condition. But if one of them is not there and it's skewing over, then the whole foot is collapsing. Did, did, does that make sense? Yes. Do you have any questions, do you know, that you can take out from patients? Patients have questions. Uh, what's, uh, what will be rain, uh, about rehabilitation? Right, so let's talk a little bit about rehabilitation. How's that, okay? And the foot is the furthest away from the heart, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes extra time for the heart to pump blood down there and to go like, to suck back up the blood from the veins, right? So the more they're dependent, the worse it gets because then it becomes swollen, right? So we want them on even kilter with the heart. You know, we want them lying down with the foot elevated so they have some good, uh, good range, of, good uh, blood flow and some ice on it if we have to. You know, if they're diabetic, we don't want to do that. If they're vascularly compromised, you don't want to even do the surgery. I'm just saying, okay? Mm -hmm. you, you cover all bases beforehand and check and make sure everything is okay. But, you know, ice is a good idea for surgical, but not for too long and so on and so forth. But that's, uh, you know, basically it until the tissues kind of seal up. If the tissues don't seal up, there's always leakage, you know, mm -hmm. and there's always swelling. Mm -hmm. If the tissues, you know, seal up, that's perfect. But if the tissues go like this, then we have cicatrix, mm -hmm. you know, and then the bunion come back or we have problems that way. So the, the first 10 days or so, the tissues will seal up first 10 days. After that, you want them to be active. You want them to go back into normal. So I say zero to, you know, zero to uh, 10 days, you know, I want them not on their foot. I want them to just go on crutches, assistance with cam boot, walker, crutches, whatever, you know? On the second 10 days, I want them to start walking, about 50% or so, okay? The third 10 days, about 75% or so, and then the last for uh, 10 days, which is about maybe the you know, second month or so, I want them to be fully loaded, fully moving with a good shoe. And possibly we'll start physical therapy at about six weeks, we'll see how they're doing. If they're doing well, there are a lot of patients that walk at about two weeks and they're doing their own thing. And most patients don't tell you, they come and they lie to you. And they say, oh yeah, I've been not walking on it. And then, the spouse or the mom or the brother or the sister will be wincing back there behind them saying, you know, don't, don't, don't believe them. But they tell on you, you know. But um, basically you can tell as a doctor that they've been walking on it, whether they have been walking on it, yes or no. Mm -hmm. And you can tell whether there's a problem, you know. So use your judgment as a doctor, you know, find out as much as you can about the history and things of that nature. I've had patients come in and then like maybe after six, six weeks, eight weeks almost, once the foot is better, you know, and everything is okay, 
they tell me, you know what? I have to confess. I was walking on it from day one. You know? Mm -hmm. Just like the patient yesterday that was here. Mm -hmm. We did that bunion, you know, with the osteochondroma. He was down here walking on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, right? Yes, good result. Also, Doc, uh, very often, lots of patients asking if they can continue doing sport and right running and jumping and things like this it's very often the question what, right, you, what right. do you say to this kind of again patient? you know i'd rather not do physical activities until they have some good soft tissue no, i mean futuristically yeah. if they can futuristically they they can go back to normal i mean you know it depends on if they heal well they go back to normal it depends on how the healing goes and uh, George behind the mic there is a uh, Georgian doctor. He's a pediatric traumatology um, here in uh, Tbilisi, Georgia. And he just finished his residency in uh, Minsk, uh, Belarus. And uh, Dr. Uh, Mikhail is a pediatric uh, orthopedic traumatology as well, right? Yeah. And also he finished from Minsk too, right? Yes. You, you guys are Minsk, uh, Minsk doctors. And uh, they've seen all kinds of stuff uh, from Belarus to Latvia to Lithuania, right? Mm -hmm. You said to me, yes, right? Yes. You have been all over the place, right? Yes, okay. I mean, yeah. How do you grade this uh, this clinic, uh, knowing what you know already? How do you feel this clinic does? Our clinic? Yeah. I think we should develop more and more. Yeah. Grow our physiotherapy things. Right, we are doing so well though compared to what we have, right? Yes, yes, I, I think mean, you know, we, we are doing. We're doing our best. We're starting from nothing. We're trying to do more yeah. and more. Well, I develop, wish you the best, so you guys. You I know? think we should uh, yeah. develop more and more. Don't stop. By the way, we are here in Tbilisi, Georgia. Beautiful Tbilisi, Georgia. Thank so, you. if you have any questions or uh, problems like this, please don't hesitate to call us and talk to us. We will put our um, clinic number at the bottom of the screen later and this way for everybody who wants to know and we'll put it in our description too. So as everybody can actually try and reach out to us if they want to. Thank Pleasure you. Pleasure talking to you guys. We'll talk to Thanks, you later. Thanks, Dr. Ellie. Thank you.